Hello everyone. Wanted to give a quick update on the truck. I came out last weekend, didn't really make good progress at all. Um, <clears throat> tried to drill out the bolts in the front cover, total failure. Um, so tonight, it's Thursday night, uh, thought I'd come and try and read the PCU or ECM, engine control module. So <clears throat> went to do that and ended up having to tear half the dash apart because the plug that goes into the dash was, uh, it would just push through. It wouldn't, you couldn't connect the connector to it. So then I get the connector connected to it, then ET wouldn't connect to it. That's the Caterpillar software. Um, so <clears throat> I took the dash apart, got all that done, uh, then decided, well, I have the adapter for the ECM, the 70 pin adapter. So I'll just remove the, uh, the ECM from the, from the block. So let me show you what I got there. So here's what I was talking about with the connector. The rivets on the connector broke off. So if you went to plug it into the bracket, the bracket goes here. Oops, sorry. It goes here, it would just push in. You couldn't actually connect it. So I took the bracket off. I'm gonna drill the rivets out and re-rivet this uh, to the bracket so that way it works. But man, I'll tell you, this, this truck just fights you everywhere. Uh, <clears throat> these screws that go in there you can see was kind of rounded out it took forever to get that little bitty screw out because you had to apply so much pressure to it to get it out because it's kind of stripped so that's going to get thrown away but you can see all these bolts they got rust on them and all that so when I put it together I think I'm going to put some anti-seize on there and see what I come up with uh, in case this has to come back apart but man, it's just fighting the whole way. I feel like I'm not making much progress on this thing. So <clears throat> I decided to take the ECM out, which surprise, I actually got it out. So something actually went right. So I got that out, it's sitting here. So I'm gonna go home and get it connected to the computer and see what, uh, I basically want to get the AP number off of it because I can't find the AP number anywhere on the block or the valve covers. So a couple of the parts places I went to to get parts, they want the AP number. So I'm going to try and pull it off the ECM and so that way I have it. But also you can pull other stuff off there, the mileage, the hours it's run, all that kind of stuff. Get a little more history on the truck. So, but this weekend, I decided to go nuclear, so I'm going to get one of those carts. I saw on a YouTube video of one of these shops. What they do is, after I remove my fancy hood stand there, you get one of those carts that the table is hydraulic. So basically you put it under there and you lift the hood up. Uh, and that way you can support it. I don't know how that's going to work on this ground here. I might have to get some wood or something to put under the wheels so I can roll it back and then put it back when I'm done obviously um, and then I'm gonna take this radiator off get that thing removed straighten out the brackets because obviously they're bent uh, get that taken care of and then I'm gonna pull the damper off you're supposed to replace those I guess every half a million miles or something they were saying I don't know, I watched the video and they were saying that those should be replaced at a certain mileage. So I'm going to take damper off and then ultimately I'm going to take the front cover off, the whole thing. So I need to get some measurements on the motor mounts down there, you know, how uh, the bolt spacing as well as the thickness of the case so I can build a bracket. So I can jack the motor up essentially, uh, take the cover off, and then put the motor mount back on. So once I get the motor mount put back on, 
then I can, you know, just have it sitting in there and then take it back to the shop and get those stupid bolts out so I can get that cover off. That's the most aggravating thing. Um, so this cover is leaking a little bit anyway, so probably be a good idea to seal it up uh, or reseal it. <clears throat> um, but that's the plan. I haven't heard back from the machine shop about the head yet. Uh, after I get radiator removed and the front cover off and all that fixed, I'll probably work on getting that put back together. Then I'm going to go underneath and I'm going to get that pan off. The pan has to come off to get the front cover off anyway. It's already loose or a lot of the bolts are already removed. So that shouldn't be that big a deal. So get the pan off, get these pistons pushed out and get a liner out and see what I'm dealing with here. Because if it's already been in line, I'm just gonna pull it. I'm just gonna pull the motor out. Uh, go have a machine, get it, do an out frame and do it right. Um, if it's not already been in framed, then I'll just find somebody that can cut the shims and get the inline kit and start putting it back together. So still a lot of unknowns, but that's the plan. Uh, working on this thing with the hood on it and the radiator is just in the way and getting frustrating. So <clears throat> that's what I'm gonna try and get done this weekend. At the very least, get the radiator out. Um, getting that front cover off is gonna be a job because you know, I gotta build a bracket, get some measurements, all that stuff. So that's the plan. Uh, I'll bring you back later uh, after I get back to the house and get this thing hooked up and first see if ET will even connect to it. Uh, if it does, obviously that's great. Pull some info off of it. I'll show you guys that and the process of doing that. Um, so, okay, so that's it for now. Uh, getting eaten up by bugs. It's crazy out here, all these mosquitoes. Um, so I'm gonna call it a night and head back to the house. thing about pulling this hood off, if anybody's got the preferred method of doing this, it looks like you can do it one of two ways. You can either take this bolt out and the whole bracket comes off, or you can take out these two bolts and it just comes off the front. Uh, if somebody could let me know what the preferred method is, it seems like taking these two bolts out first would be the easiest simply because then you don't have to hook it up or lift it up higher to get over the bumper because you can see it kind of loops around the bumper here so you'd have to lift it up and then come out whereas if you just take these off it looks like it'll just slide straight out so uh, if anybody's got any ideas on that or opinions I appreciate it so thanks again so I made it back to the house and successfully got it connected and working this connector and even the connector box I picked up at uh, diesel laptops. So there seems to be an issue with the connector from the truck connector to the ECM. So I have troubleshoot that. But this is pretty easy to set up. Uh, you got leads that go to the battery using 12 volt power. You got an on off switch here. For the power and I believe they put a fuse in there too. Yeah, fuse is up by the battery. Uh, so you just connect it into the ECM and then come over here and you can see it successfully connected to the uh, ECM. So all that seems to work pretty good. I uh, just wanted to get some information off here, but I don't see the AP number, which is what most of the online sites are looking for when you go to order parts. So, I don't know. We'll have to take a look at that and see. Get online and see who's done that kind of stuff and see if I can't get the AP code out of it. So, that's it. Uh, just wanted to let everybody know that, uh, you know, connected to the ECM, everything seems to look okay. So, thanks again for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. Uh, leave me a comment if you like. And I uh, hope everyone's well.
and see you soon.